Hello and welcome back to learnaboutice.com. In this short video I'm going to explain to you what different types of indirect ophthalmoscopic lenses there are and which ones you should buy in your first year of residency. This is a very important decision as they can be quite expensive and you don't want to buy the ones that you never use. I'm going to focus solely on Falk lenses because these are the most common ones and to be honest the only ones that I know. All right, let's have a look at this table. I chose the nine most important lenses that Falk produces and put them into categories. Falk actually has three different generations of lenses or series of lenses, the classic, the super and the digital. In the rows, you can see the different situations that you might use the lenses in. Row number one is for your retinal periphery or just your everyday all around lens, the ones that you would just use in your practice and have with you all the time. Row number two is for macular lenses. These are the ones that you would use to really see those tiny macular changes. Row number three is for what I call helmet lenses. Helmet lenses are the ones that you would use for your binocular indirect ophthalmoscopy exam. Here in Switzerland, we barely ever use these lenses. We do like 95% of our retinal exams on the slit lamp and only use the helmet lenses for patients that can't sit in front of a slit lamp, like people that can't move out of a wheelchair or out of a bed or just little kids. I know from my international colleagues that they use helmet lenses a lot more, so I'm really curious about how these lenses are being used. Why don't you put a comment down below and tell me what you use your helmet lenses for and how often you use them. All right, so let's have a look at these lenses. So in the classic series, we have the 90D, 78D and the 20D. The Super Series, which is a bit newer, has the Super Field, Super 66 and Pan Retinal 2.2. And the digital series, which just came out a couple of years ago, has the digital wide field, the digital high mag, and the digital clear field. Of course, each series contains a lot more lenses, but I'm only going to explain the ones that you see here. So, which one of these nine lenses should you actually get in your first year of residency? Let's have a look. For helmet lenses, get the 20D. The clear field is so much more expensive, and honestly, for how little I use it, I don't see any benefit from it. For the macular lenses, my suggestion is, as a first year resident, don't get any of them. Get a good all round lens and only if you're frustrated and don't see enough macular details, switch to a macular lens. Now to the most important part, which all round or periphery lens should you get? This is a pretty tricky question because even though I put them in the same category, they are not at all the same. There are three factors that distinguish them. The field of view, the image magnification and the working distance. The field of view has been improved from generation to generation. The 90D has 89 degrees, the super field 116 degrees and the digital wide field even has 124 degrees. The only difference between the 90D and the super field is the field of view. That's why it's called super field, I guess. They both have a working distance of 7 millimeters and an image magnification of 0.76. And as I mentioned before, while the 90D only has about 90 degrees of field of view, the super field already has 116. So if you want to get only one lens, I would recommend the super field. It is a bit bigger and heavier than the 90D and of course more expensive, but I think it's a good compromise between image size and field of view. The digital wide field is the ultimate lens for viewing the periphery. I cannot remember finding a retinal tear with a mirrored contact lens that I couldn't see with my wide field before. But the digital wide field has two drawbacks. Number one is working distance. A working distance of 4 to 5 millimeters means that you have to put the lens so close to the patient's eye that you usually touch the eyelashes. This is uncomfortable for the patient and it just makes the lens dirty all the time. Drawback number two is image magnification. With a magnification of 0.72, everything is pretty small. Especially if you're looking for diabetic changes or small changes in the optic nerve, it's very hard to see. I know it doesn't sound like a lot, but the difference of 0.04 between the digital wide field and the super field just makes a huge difference for the beginner. The last factor you should consider as a beginner when trying to decide which lens to get is how easy it is to see the retina in an undilated patient. 
As a rule of thumb, you can say the bigger the lens is and the closer it has to be to the eye, the harder it is to get a clear picture of the retina without a dilated pupil. So from left to right, it gets harder and harder. So let's summarize really quickly. Get a 20D for a helmet lens, don't get a macula lens in your first year. When deciding on your all-round lens, try to weigh up the four factors that I mentioned. Working distance, field of view, magnification, and ease of use in undilated patients. The 90D is very easy to use, has a good magnification, but does not let you see the periphery that well. The super field is a bit harder to use in myotic patients, but gives you a much better field of view. The digital wide fields field of view is absolutely phenomenal, but it is much harder to use in an undilated patient and everything is very small so you can miss diabetic changes or small macular or optic nerve changes. My recommendation is get a 90D and practice your fundus exam. Once you're really good at it, you're gonna find out which situations you would like to see a bit more with your lens. And for the periphery, in the beginning, you have to use a three mirror contact lens anyways, because you need to learn how to do that. So which lens did you decide on? Tell me in the comments down below. Now the next question is always, where do I get those lenses? I recommend iTech, they have very good prices and fast delivery. Please don't get them on AliExpress or somewhere on Amazon. This is an instrument that you're going to work with for the rest of your career, so you need the best possible optical quality. Okay, that was already it. I hope you learned something. If you still need some help using these lenses, wait for a couple of weeks. I am currently working on a very detailed video with awesome tips on how to perfect your fundus exam. So subscribe to this channel to not miss that video. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, give it a thumbs up and see you in the next video.